Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to part three of Sonic Mania. We just made it to Flying Battery Zone with Sonic and Tails. Uh, but there is another character I haven't shown off yet, and that's our main man, Knuckles the Echidna. And his playthrough is a little bit different from the others because it does have some pretty exclusive stuff that you'll only see with him. So, uh, let's check it out. So yeah, folks, uh, Knuckles does start off in Green Hill Zone, but he actually starts off underground, which is completely different from Sonic and Tails, and mainly because this section has helped to get you acclimated to Knuckles' gameplay. You know, the fact that he can plow through walls without needing to spin dash through them because he's super strong, the fact that he can glide, and the fact that he can climb walls and reach places that other characters can't. And uh, that's pretty fun. This entire playthrough has a lot of exclusive, neat things. Uh, but oh my god, it has been forever since we've played as Knuckles like this, you know? Like, he obviously hasn't gone anywhere. He's been in the Sonic Riders games, he's been in Sonic Rush, and he's been in Generations, he's been in Lost World. But he hasn't really been playable in the same way since the Game Boy Advance. Since Sonic Advance 3, we haven't been able to glide and climb walls with our favorite red echidna, he wasn't even in Sonic 4, you know? And so, being able to play Sonic Mania and to experience this gameplay style again... Oh my god, Knuckles, I have missed you. It has been way too long. How c Since Sonic Advance 3, it's been that long. It's ridiculous. But, um... He still goes through the same levels as the other characters, but... As you can see right here, he does have some unique pathways that only he can access. Like, that wall, I could not get through as Sonic or Tails, because you have to spin dash through them, and it's a little bit above the ground. Knuckles, however, could just plow through it simply by jumping into it, and as you can tell from this level design, it was clearly built with Knuckles in mind. So, if you play as Knuckles, you're actually going to get some pretty unique pathways, pretty unique content that is different from the Sonic or Tails playthrough. And, uh, by the way, the bubbling water... The bubble shield protects you from it. Aw, yeah. <laughs> but he still goes through the same levels. He takes on the same bosses. Um, sometimes it proves to be a little bit more challenging than usual, which is why I've come back to show off the Eggmobile fight in Studioopolis Zone, because now we're going to do this proper. Knuckles the Echidna, if you remember from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, cannot jump as high as Sonic or Tails. They jump much higher than Knuckles does. So, this Eggmobile is actually hanging a little out of reach for our Echidna, and I have to wait for all of his tricks to happen before I can actually attack the guy. So, when it's a sunny day, you know, the, the spotlights shine really, really extreme lights, and then Eggman kind of dips down a little bit so you can bounce into him. It's very hot outside the beams. Stay under the Eggmobile. <laughs> Sometimes he shoots lightning at you, and that's pretty easy to dodge. You just make sure you stay away from the thunderclouds, get out from under them. Uh, it, you can't really get an, an advantage on Eggman when the thunder's happening. At least, I don't believe so. Unless the electric shield actually re reacts to them differently, which would be kind of interesting. But, uh... When you got heavy winds, jump for one of the sidebars and let go when Eggman's about to be above you. And then you'll take him out like it's nobody's business, so yeah. Sonic and Tails can take out that boss a lot quicker, as we saw in Part 2. Knuckles, he is going to have a little bit of a trickier time because of his very low jumps. But hey, time to go back to an Angel Island zone from Sonic 3 and K. Let's head to Flying Battery and let's play through it as Knuckles the Echidna. And it's, I couldn't think of a better spot because he actually has a lot of places that he can reach with his climbing ability. Like right up front. Let's go here and... no, nope, Climb the wall. Let's go up here instead. What's over here? Sonic couldn't get here. A lightning shield. Electric shield. Aw, oh, yeah. <laughs> One question I've always had about the plot, though, is that why is Angel Island in the ocean, anyway? Like, I know they're trying to 
be so faithful to Sonic 3 and Knuckles that they had pretty much the exact same intro. You know, the exact same theme song. Sonic and Tails flying in through the plane, and then they get to the Angel Island Zone where stuff happens. Before, it was Knuckles punching Sonic and taking the Chaos Emeralds. This time around, it's the hard-boiled heavies finding the Phantom Ruby. I guess the Phantom Ruby uh, put Angel Island back in the ocean. Uh, that's what I have to assume, but still. Where did the Phantom Ruby come from? Why did it just suddenly appear on Angel Island one day? I don't know, but it can hop between dimensions and just go wa and do whatever the heck it wants. <laughs> that's, that's the consistent thing I'll say about both this and the Sonic Forces playthrough coming up after this. Because, spoilers, the Phantom Ruby is also in that. But uh, the Phantom Ruby, it just does whatever the hell it wants. It just does whatever the hell it wants. Anywho, folks, I'm completely not talking about this. This zone is pretty much identical. Like, almost the exact same level design as it was in Sonic and Knuckles. Like, Flying Battery 1 in Sonic and Knuckles is exactly the same as Flying Battery 1 in Sonic Mania. There's a few key differences here and there. Like, sometimes in the higher sections, you know those missiles that, like, shot up and then went back down and you needed to wait for them to blow open the ceiling so you could go down into the lower levels? Uh, in Mania, it only takes one set of bombs to blow open the ceiling, as opposed to two sets, like in the original game, so that's a key difference. But, uh, the electric shield now reacts differently to the magnetized, uh, magnet devices here. So it actually attracts to the ceiling and makes you play upside down, and you actually have to kind of get used to that, because that does not happen in Sonic & Knuckles, even though that game did have an electric shield. And it can make the platforming a little treacherous, a little treacherous. If you don't have the electric shield, though, you're fine. Just keep playing like normally, but still. That's something new they did with the stage. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> you know, it's weird. I played Sonic Mania in 2017, and it's like, Ah, oh, sweet, flying battery zone. I get to act one. And yeah, because it's so identical and so exact to what the original stage was, uh, nothing about this stage really surprised me. I kind of knew where everything was. I even knew where the special rings were in order to go to a special stage because we're coming up to it now, actually. Pretty pretty close now, actually. But uh, there is a special stage ring that is underneath some spikes. And in order to get to it, you actually have to push the spikes like so. And then you go down to a lower hole, and oh look, we got ourselves a special stage ring. That is also like that in Sonic and Knuckles, and remembering that after all these years, <laughs> I go through Flying Battery again, and you know, it's the exact same level design, and so I was like, oh, okay, I've played this before, you know, I've played this before. But now we get to see Knuckles in the special stage. Again, uh, nothing different with the characters in the special stages. Knuckles doesn't jump lower in here. At least, I don't believe so. I've never noticed him jumping lower. He seems to jump about the same height as everybody else, but... Uh... So we got these bumpers on the sides, right? And they're, like, really tiny. Like, these Mode 7 graphics kind of thing going on, it reminds me so much of, like, Mario Kart. And, like, sometimes with Mario Kart, there'd be, like, these little pathways or walls that like they don't look high and your character is obviously above them but you can't really jump over them that well and it's so easy especially with this special stage to think that you're jumping over something and jumping in between like a corner and the pathway and then you accidentally like boom hit nothing and you just kind of keep going back and, and you're like what the heck i didn't hit anything but i just like hit a wall or something and it's like you got to pay attention that like there are bumper walls sometimes outlining the edges of the track, and when they are, there is an invisible wall that I guess you should think of it as like a glass sliding door that's like really clean. <laughs> it's, it's, it's spotless. It is just clean to perfection that it doesn't even look like there's a glass door there, you know? So uh, when you have those bumper walls, you can't jump over them, you can't jump past them. Uh, there is a wall above them that you will bounce off of. And you have to kind of get used to that when you're playing the game, but, uh... Special stages are still fun otherwise, and, uh, you know, you just gotta get used to that when you're playing the special stages. Just gotta get used to that. One thing that is different with Flying Battery Act 1, though, is the boss. Oh, hi, Eggman! Oh god, oh god, oh god. Because this time around, Eggman drops you into the trash compactor, 
and he keeps sending a whole bunch of badniks at you that can easily be destroyed with a single jump, so it's no big deal. You know, from a robot's perspective, this is actually kind of dark and morbid. <laughs> Look at all the dead motobugs and stuff down here! Ugh! Ugh! Orbot and Cubot would be freaking the hell out if they were down here, but, uh, as you could probably guess from the boss fight, the more the conveyors start crushing each other, the more the compactor starts crushing the garbage, the more the garbage starts to push up, and then we can get closer to the device on the top, and then we can start hitting it more and more and more. Obviously, uh, this fight goes on a little bit longer with Knuckles, just because he has a lower jump, but whatevs, whatevs, I say. Also, don't jump into it when it's got, like, electric sparks. Unless you have the electric shield, in which case the electric shield will completely bypass those electric sparks and protect you, and everything will be hunky-dory. So whatevs, you know, whatevs. But now Flying Battery is going to be different. Now Flying Battery is not going to resemble the Flying Battery we might all have grown up on, you know? Because it's like, I I've played Sonic & Knuckles a lot. Like, ever since I was a kid, when I played it originally in the 90s on the Sega Genesis, and in high school when I picked up the Sonic Mega Collection, and yeah, go underneath the garbage, make a left, here's another special ring. So, uh, there's one for ya, but, um... You know, I, I played Sonic 3 & Knuckles to death in high school. I remember I would always get off of high school, and I would just always boot up Sonic Mega Collection on my GameCube, and I'd just keep booting this up and replaying it and replaying it and replaying it, along with Sonic 2, my favorite Sonic game ever. And I played the classic games quite a bit, so much so that you just kind of you just kind of get used to all of the levels that you're playing. You get used to like flying battery and all that stuff, and so that's the only thing that's a little bit disappointing for like a hardcore Sonic fan who's been with the series for a long, long time. It's not enough that like. They bring back old zones, but a lot of the, the zones actually just have the same exact level design sometimes. You know, where you're just going through the exact same set piece that it feels like you're playing a remaster of Sonic 3 & Knuckles as opposed to a new game. Now obviously, I'm in completely new territory right now, so I have no reason to talk about this at this very moment. And if you're not a hardcore Sonic fan, if you never grew up with the Genesis games, if this is your first exposure to classic Sonic-style gameplay, then I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Because this is going to be your first time playing it. I know people who grew up with Sonic in the 90s, but they only played Sonic 2. They only played Sonic 3 and Knuckles. They never played Sonic CD. They never played uh, any of those, you know, unique unique zones uh, tied to Sonic CD. And spoiler, yes, there are Sonic CD stages, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm belly aching about. This level's pretty fun. This level's pretty neat. You got a whole bunch of electric... Like, the, you got the mole people in their little turrets, and they're always activating the electric wires and stuff, and you have to swing on these things in order to, you know, damage them or get through the area, basically. Also, another special stage ring. Let go of the chain. Go right here, and then you can grab it no problem. But I'm only getting one per zone, so I'm not touching it. <laughs> Why aren't you grabbing the secret rings? Oh my god! You could have had 14 Chaos Emeralds by now! Ah! Hey, I'm just showing you that there's lots of Chaos Emerald opportunities in this game, okay? Okay? <laughs> I will be honest, I'm not huge on Knuckles compared to the other characters. Not only the, the nerfed jump that I, I wish was a little bit higher, like Sonic and Tails, uh, but also when you're gliding around and stuff, you know, when you uncurl from gliding, when you let go of gliding, you don't turn into a ball form, you're just Knuckles floating there, and it's so easy to take damage, unnecessary damage, that uh, Knuckles, he's cool, I like Knuckles, you know. It, it was always fun climbing walls, and there's a trophy. Window shopping. Just jump in between those windows and fly through and you'll get a trophy. Pretty easy peasy. But, um... You know, it, Knuckles has never been my preferred playable character, I'll just say that. I always felt like Sonic 3 and Knuckles, his playthrough was always designed to be a sort of hard mode. Not only could he jump a lot lower, but the, even some of the way the bosses were handled were obviously way harder than they were in the Sonic playthrough. Like, even if you could jump normally as Sonic, the way they changed the bosses was just like, oh boy, oh boy, they really... Okay, now they're really going nuts on me. Like, I remember in Launch Base Act 1 in particular, they have like this, uh... 
this box with like these swinging chains and stuff. And with Sonic and Tails, you only really take out one. With Knuckles, you have to take on two at a time. And I remember finding that pretty darn challenging when I was a kid. But uh, Mania doesn't make the bosses that much worse or anything. It has a few alternate paths here and there. It does have a few exclusivities, but uh, you know, it's nothing too crazy. <laughs> So we got a spider eggmobile, <laughs> and normally this thing would be shooting a whole bunch of energy balls at me, but I keep hitting him constantly whenever he's down and shaking him up, which always resets his uh, his pattern, right? And every time I keep hitting him and hitting him and hitting him, he can't really get any chances to do any attacks on me, so uh, he's kind of screwed out of luck. <laughs> You can't damage him by just jumping into him, so what I have to do is I have to actually run right into the ball when I'm swinging on the pole in order to bounce him into the spikes or jump at him from a certain angle just hard enough. Spin dash jumping really helps, by the way, because you get a lot of speed and force that way. But uh, you want to have a lot of force and you just want to hit the Eggmobile so hard that it goes careening into the spikes and gets damaged that way. And ugh, I almost got crushed. That would have been it for me. <laughs> Again, a really creative, really fun boss fight, and I thought that was such a unique way to take on Eggman, and I was really proud of, of that particular design. I was really proud of how that fight went out. And, uh, yeah. And you know, Knuckles is going to fly off with that hang glider. We're going to catch up with Sonic and Tails in Part 4. Before I go, though, I would like to talk about something funny that developed in the Sonic fan community as a result of the spider boss fight in Flying Battery Zone. So you know how Dr. Eggman is upside down in his cockpit when you're taking on the spider? There was one fan who decided to take it the other way around. Not that they were upside down, but that it was someone standing, you know, right up. And they made a little design based off of, like, an upside down Eggman if it was just a girl with sunglasses and big poofy hair. And that was a big thing uh, with the Sonic fan community, where a lot of people were making fan art of this particular character that one user made up. And it was kind of a big deal. You know how when uh, New Super Mario Bros. U came out uh, for the Switch, and they introduced this new element where Toadette could become Peach through an item? And so people thought, like, hey, what if Bowser picked up that item? Bowsette! Ha ha ha! Very similar thing when Sonic Mania came out. We had a fan character known as Omelette, which may not have picked up as much traction as Bowsette, but uh, that was a thing for a long period of time. And I know there is a, a group of Sonic fans who, who are adamant that they should make this character canon, that they should make this character an absolute canon character. Maybe she's Eggman's niece or Eggman's daughter or something like that. You know, introduce a Bowser Jr. into the series. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you look up, like, Sonic Mania Omelettes, because uh, that's what, you know, the fans called her, this this fan creation, uh, you'll probably find a lot of fun stuff that way. But uh, anywho, I'm done talking. See you in part four.